All right, students, this is the next video in the series about solving systems of equations. Now, sometimes this is called, in some textbooks, simultaneous equations. And a previous video was the graphing method. You draw a graph line of each equation to show the solution, and hopefully those lines intersect. That's one way to find the answer. This video is about the substitution method. Here it is. Let's look at problems 5 and 6. Solve each system by substitution. Now this method is uh, actually misnamed. It should be called double substitution. So here's the first tip. For number 5, I have 4x minus 3y equals 17 and negative 8x plus y equals negative 19. Now the place to start is to see if any of the x's or the y's has a 1 coefficient. In other words, if it's just a plain old x or a y. And in this case, we have, in the second equation, we have 8 negative 8x 8, 8 plus y equals negative 19. That gives me my first start. Now number 6, I have in the second equation x plus y. So it really doesn't matter where I start. Just to be different, I'll um, focus on the x in that equation. Now you need to find that out because that tells you what to focus on first. So I'm going to take my equation negative 8x plus y equals negative 19 and I'm going to solve for y. Alright, in this case I'm going to add 8x to each side and that will give me y equals, um, I'll put my x term first, 8x minus 19. So what I've done is I have rewritten the second equation in terms of x. I know that this expression, 8x minus 19, can be substitu substituted in for y. All right. Now I'm going to take the second or the first equation, and here's the second substitution here, and it says 4x minus 3y, but now I know that I can call y this expression right here. So I'm going to just substitute it in there. And notice it says negative 3y, and this is negative 3y, and equals 17. Now it looks kind of complicated at first, but basically you rewrite one equation in terms of one of the variables and you substitute that in to the other equation. So let's solve this out. 4x minus 24x minus, or that's a positive 57 equals 17. All right, we're going to combine my x's together. That will be negative 20 x plus 57 equals 17. We're going to subtract 57 from each side. Negative 20x equals negative 40. And x would be, because I divide both sides by negative 20, and x would be a positive 2. All right, that is one of my answers. Now I choose either equation to solve and substitute that in. I'm going to take this first equation, negative 8x plus y equals negative 19. I'm going to substitute in positive 2 for the x, so that would be negative 16 plus y equals negative 19. I'm going to add 16 to each side so I can get the y by itself and y would be negative 3. All right, it's a lot of algebra, but you have to kind of keep track of what you're doing. Now number 6, I noticed that both the x and the y have a 1 coefficient, so I'm going to write, rewrite the second equation in terms of x. So instead of x plus y equals negative 6, I'm going to go ahead and subtract y from each side and now I have an expression in y that tells me what x is and that would be negative y minus 6. 
So in the first equation, instead of x, I can substitute in that expression. I have to be careful about these negative signs now. So here we go, negative 2 times x, but x is negative y minus 6. I'm substituting it in there. And then it says plus 5y. And that equals 19 from the first equation. All right, multiply with the distributive property. That would be positive 2y plus 12 plus 5y equals 19. Combine my y terms together there. So 7y plus 12 equals 19. I'm going to subtract 12 from each side. The goal is to get the y by itself, right? So 7y equals positive 7, and y must be equal to 1. All right, so I've got one answer, and I've already done one substitution. And now I go ahead and substitute my y equals 1 value into either equation. Well, that's going to be pretty easy because if this is x plus y equals negative 6, I know that y is supposed to be a positive 1. So x plus 1 equals negative 6. I want to subtract 1 from each side. And so x must be negative 7. All right. Now in my answer key, notice how the answer is written. It's written as an ordered pair. I've got number 5, x was positive 2 and y was negative 3. So I write it as this ordered pair, 2, negative 3. And in number 6, I had x is negative 7, y is 1, and I write it as that ordered pair. That's where the lines of these two equation graphs would meet. Thanks for watching this video. The next one is elimination method, which is a lot less writing, and I think you'll like it.